What's up my Weld Tube family? It's your boy Matt, Warrior Welding TX, back again on the Weld Tube set at the one and only South Coast Welding Academy in Houston, Texas. Today, we're doing oxyacetylene cutting and safety. We're gonna go from torch to bottles, walk you through that, cutting techniques, stuff like that. So let's get rocking and rolling, let's do it. <laughs> so today guys, we're doing oxyacetylene cutting. So. I can't stress the importance of safety here. Um, see, it's the most basic form of welding we're gonna do in this industry, and every welder needs to know it, but if there's one thing that can hurt you, it is the oxyacetylene process, okay? I preach that to my students all the time. If there's one thing in the lab that can bite you, it's gonna be an oxyacetylene, and it's not difficult as long as you think about what you're doing while you're doing it, be in the moment, okay? To get us started here, we'll start, walk you through from the torch, okay? so. It's a typical Victor torch setup. Um, this one's a split torch, so you can run different accessories on it. Some are full length, just cutting, but with a torch like this, this is what I prefer. I'm a fabricator, you know, we do a lot of different things. So with this option being a straight torch barrel with a threaded end, we can run, you know, rosebuds on it. You can run a cutting attachment. You can run a welding attachment on it. So it's the most versatile bang for your buck. I enjoy it. This, I have the same exact torch on my rig. Walking back, to our bottles, you know, your traditional quarter inch hose, we have our low pressure acetylene tank and our high pressure oxygen. Again, very basic, I'm sure you've all seen this before. Um, but what you do with it and how you do it makes a big difference. So just to assemble our torch, okay? All of our attachments have a nut on them. They shouldn't, <laughs> they should have a knurled fitting, all right, because you don't wanna use a wrench on this stuff. There's O-rings inside the torch bodies no matter what attachment you're using, there's O-rings in there to seal the gas, okay? So if you reef down on this with a, with a wrench, adjustable wrench or whatever, you can actually crush the O-rings and create a leak. So it's important that all these things are hand tight only, okay? So just like anything else, you, we're gonna sit it on there, start it, just hand tight, okay? With no need to throw a wrench on this, that's why there's O-rings, all right? So get it on there, crimp down on it just with your hand, good to go, all right? So now, Technically, our torch is ready for operation. So on our two valves down here on the bottom, our red hose is always your fuel gas. In this case, it's acetylene, okay? And the green hose is your oxygen hose. So in this case, since we have our cutting attachment, we're gonna open our oxygen valve all the way up at the torch, okay? We want full oxygen coming up. We're gonna adjust our cutting oxygen up here on the actual cutting attachment. So this is all the way open. We're gonna keep this closed for now until we light the torch and also always leave your fuel gas closed as well until you're ready to rock and roll, all right? So now that our torch is ready, we're gonna step back here to the bottles and there's a procedure on how I like to do this, okay? So, and it's really not how I like to do it, it's how it should be done. So, start with your low pressure cylinder, okay? So acetylene on first, and then when we shut down our torch, acetylene off first. So the fuel gas is gonna be first on both operations, okay? Big thing when opening your cylinders, I don't care if it's a low pressure or a high pressure. It's a good habit to be, create. It's, you don't want to create bad habits. So always open your cylinders slowly, all right? Step on the other side of your regulator, away from the pressure, just in case, God forbid, something would happen, you're out of harm's way, okay? So stand on the opposite side of your regulators, slowly open the valve, just crack the valve open, okay? And on your acetylene side, we only need about a half to three quarters of a turn. And why? Well, it's for good reason. If there's a safety issue, like I said, God forbid something would happen, but if a fire would break out and you need to shut these cylinders down super quick, this is the one you're gonna have to kill the fastest because this is our fuel cylinder. So by only having it open about a half turn, you can get run over to it in two seconds, you're shut down and you're out of harm's way, okay? rather than on your high pressure cylinders where you'd be here you know, for a minute cranking this thing down. On the fuel cylinder, you only wanna open it as far as you need to. Once there's pressure on the regulator, that's all the further you need to open this cylinder, okay? So like I said, about a half to three quarters of a turn should be plenty. So now this cylinder's on, oxygen cylinder, same thing. We're gonna stand opposite of the pressure side, crack it open slowly. You don't wanna jam that diaphragm, you just wanna ease the pressure on. Once you see pressure on the valve or on the gauge, you can go ahead and open it all the way up. It's a dual seat valve on the cylinder, so you wanna open it up. Again, don't crank down hard on it, just seat it. 
because it will seat on both the bottom and the top. So when you seal it closed, it seats. When you open it all the way up, it also seats, okay? Now our cylinders are on. We're ready to set the pressure on our gauges, okay? With the pressures, it's all about what size tip you're running, okay? So in our torch today, we're running a single lot. Tips go from triple lot, double lot, single lot, one, two, and so forth, so forth. The higher the number, the bigger the tip. So being a single lot, one, zero, um, we're kind of in the middle of what most people would run out there. This will cut anything from quarter inch to, you can push it up to about an inch and it'll still cut under the same pressures. So for a number zero, and you can look up this chart online, I'm not gonna go through every single pressure scenario. There's um, tip to pressure charts all over the place, just Google it. Um, you run about three to five pounds on your acetylene, and I'm gonna run about 25, max out about 30 PSI on our oxygen cylinder. And to set our pressures, you wanna crack your valves open, okay? So we're gonna set our acetylene pressure first. Crack your valve open on the torch. And then we can start turning or tightening the regulator, okay? So as you tighten the regulator in, you'll start to see the needle raise. Gets up to about five. Shut, your, shut off the valve. Do the same thing on the oxygen side. Remember, this guy's already fully open, so we're gonna use the top valve on our cutting attachment. Again, crack that open. Crank down on our regulator. This one goes from zero to 50, so 25. Just put it about right in the middle. There's no you know, science to this, just eyeball it as plenty, plenty good enough for this scenario. The reason I like to open the valves is because if you shut the valve right now, it's showing more pressure than actual one. So you want, I only care about the working pressure, the pressure I'm actually gonna be using while cutting. I could care less what the regulator says right now under resting, but when you crack the, your valve open, the needle will fall back to where you want it and you're ready to go. Whenever you use an oxyacetylene, whether you're cutting, welding with it, whatever you're doing, you wanna use at least a shade five, okay? So shade five lens is pretty typical for anything related to a torch. Up here, I got a few options. Um, super comfortable option. There is a downfall to these type goggles is that you can't wear safety glasses with them. So depending on what kind of site you're on and OSHA regulations per that job, these might not always be an option. Personally, I really like to combo these goggles with the clear face shield, but it's not always an option. So <clears throat> these here are your standard come free with your torch, okay? Most welding students getting into the game, showing up for your first day of school, it's pretty typical of what you're gonna see. They fit terribly, and you can't always fit safety glasses under them, or if you wear eyeglasses, these aren't always the best option, okay? They're just not comfortable, especially for a long day of work. So I think out of all the options, just the Shade 5 face shield is probably the, my go-to favorite one because I can, it's easy if you wear eyeglasses, safety glasses, whatever the case may be, it's, you can fit anything under this and you have full coverage. So if, if God, you know, anything could happen, you're cutting, metal gets blown back at you, you have full face coverage, you're protected, okay? Uh, most jobs that I do get on require safety glasses and face shield. If you're using a torch, even a cutoff wheel, you have to have both, you can't just wear one or the other. So that's where we're at right now. But these are great, I love them, they're comfortable, not always an option. These, comes with your torch, you pretty much toss these to the side. Focus on the face shields, that's really where it's at. Industry standard, most people are gonna be wearing those in the plants, so get yourself one. Again, cheap investment, these stuff, I mean $15, so. and. The headgears last forever. You can always get replacement lenses for them. That's no big deal. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna go with the face shield. <clears throat> it's comfortable and I'm gonna be here a while. So that's what I'm gonna pick for today. So we're gonna do a couple of things, all right? We have one inch, we have half inch, and we have three eighths here. A couple different options that they hooked me up with before I came down. So everything was ready to rock and roll. We're gonna do a straight cut on one inch plate and then any of you guys ever done any structural type work or anything like that, you know if you go out to a blank pad, you're doing from the ground up, there's embeds in the concrete already, a lot of times they're in the wrong spot. So you're forced to make a base plate on the fly. So most rig guys, structural rig hands, will have plate in the back of your truck on your bed. So I'm gonna lay out a base plate for you guys, torch cut some holes for concrete anchors, part it off, just like a scenario if we were out in the field because this happens constantly. All right, so we're ripping this one inch plate down. Got a nice sharp soapstone, okay? Combination square. So depending on how big you need it, you'd lay it out with a tape measure first, but 
put our nice straight line on there, got our guide clamped up, set our distance, do a couple dry runs, make sure it's where we need to be, okay? And then we're ready to start, start cutting. So first thing we need to do is get our torch set, right? We're gonna get our torch lit, we're gonna get it set, okay? We have three different flame types. Personally, I always use a neutral flame, okay? So a neutral flame, that's what I'm gonna set right now, and I'll show you both flame types. To get our torch lit, first thing we wanna do, we're gonna double check just to make sure our pressures are still where we need them to be, all right? So I'm running five on my acetylene bottle, running 25 pounds on my high pressure oxygen cylinder, okay? So just like when we set our pressures, red first, acetylene first, so we're gonna open our acetylene valve first and light our fuel gas. So just crack your valve, you don't want this blowing out of here like a flamethrower, okay? So just about a quarter of, an, quarter of a turn, just crack it open, you're gonna have gas flow. Take your striker, go ahead and light it, okay? You can see all that black smoke coming off of the acetylene. So you're gonna ease your valve open until that smoke starts to go away, all right? So once that smoke starts to go away, that's all you need, you don't want it, you know, crazy amount of fuel and you don't see it starting to separate from the tip you don't want a little bit you can now you can really see that smoke don't breathe it in all right so ease out until that black smoke just starts to go away now we're going to do the same thing on our our oxygen valve we're going to ease the valve open nice and easy and then you can see on the inside of the flame you can see those cones starting to come together so now we have a nice sharp blue cone, that's a neutral flame, okay? Hit our oxygen valve just to make sure our flame doesn't change. If it does, we can adjust it then. But see how it starts to shoot out on the inside? Hold your valve open and adjust accordingly until your cutting flame is also a neutral flame, okay? And we have a nice flame, we're ready to rock and roll, okay? So now that we are our flame set, our cutting flame is fine. Being a thick plate, we're gonna throw a little bit of preheat into it. So just run your torch back and forth a little bit. You don't have to get too carried away. By no means does it need to be glowing red. Just get a little heat in there. Now we're ready to start cutting. All right, adjust our torch up just a hair. So get comfortable, I like to prop on something. Just hold your torch right on the end of that plate and so it gets cherry red, okay? Don't jump into it too quick, it's not gonna wanna cut. You wanna keep your neutral flame cones about an eighth of an inch off the material. So now that that edge is starting to melt, you can start introducing your cutting oxygen. And then you wanna go nice and easy, okay? Keep a nice, easy pace. You don't wanna start and stop, you wanna be nice and smooth. If you go too fast, you're gonna outrun your cut. Another thing to think about while you're doing this is where are your hoses? You definitely don't want them underneath with all that dross dropping. And also, when you're done, this material is probably going to fall. So the last thing you want to do is get it caught up on your foot or on your hoses. So just keep aware of your surroundings. Make sure you know where all your stuff is while you're doing this. Now that we made our cut, just like we started our torch, okay? You start with your acetylene, we're gonna end with our acetylene. So the first valve we're gonna close, our acetylene valve, kill your fuel gas, then the oxygen coming through your torch can snuff out that flame just in case it is burning back into your tip a little bit. And then, of course, shut off your oxygen second. Clean cut, take your grinder, touch it up real quick, 
Again, that's one inch plate, one inch cut, single out tip. It's pretty much pushing that tip to the limit, but like you can see, pretty slick. All right, now that we've got our cut out of the way on our one inch plate, we're gonna simulate some field fabrication. If we're on a structural site, uh, maybe the embeds are in the wrong place, whatever the case may be, we need to make a base plate for, let's say a four inch square tube, okay? So we have eight inch flat bar, half inch thick. We're gonna lay it out. So one nice square. So I don't know, this, this edge here is from the factory. Nothing we're doing right now is super critical, so I think we're safe to go ahead and use that. It's not too rough. Sometimes they come out of the factory or the mill, they're really, really bad, but if we throw a square on it, it might be a 16th out. I think we're good to go, okay? So eight inch flat bar, again, we're gonna weld a four inch tube to it, so we're gonna do an eight inch square. So I'm gonna take our tape measure, measure over eight inches. Again, using a sharpened soap stone, you wanna have nice, precise lines. It takes two seconds on your grinder, so. Take pride in your work and do it right the first time. So go ahead and lay this out. Come over eight inches. Put a little, little V right there. Go ahead and lay out that cut so we know that's size of our base plate. Now we're gonna lay out the four holes, okay? Gotta put concrete anchors in it, so. Best way to do this, I'm gonna go corner to corner with it. I'm just using the blade of my square. Go ahead and lay that out, okay? So, like I said, we're gonna use a four inch tube, all right? Theoretically speaking. So we have an eight inch square, four inch tube, so eight minus four is four inches. We're gonna divide that by two, that's two inches, all right? So we're gonna lay out our tube before we even cut it or put holes in it and get everything laid out so we know we're center on this tube on this plate is gonna be for our tube. So I set my square to two inches, because we have, again, an eight inch square, four inch tube, eight minus four, you have four. We're gonna divide that by two, so we know it's two inches on either side of the tube. All right, so now we can just lay our square up here. Soapstone, drag a straight line. Do the same thing on the edge, drag a straight line. Come over here, do the same thing, and then since I can't do it from that edge, I'm just gonna subtract two from six, or from eight, I'm gonna come over six inches from the mill side. Go ahead and drag a straight line there, all right? So now we know inside that box, bam, that's right where our four inch square tube's gonna be, okay? Now we know how much real estate we have to cut the holes for our concrete anchors, okay? So I'm gonna center it. So since we went two inches, I'm gonna go one inch for the concrete anchor. Set our square to one inch, bam. Come on over here. And those lines that we marked corner to corner, now that's our center line of our concrete anchor. All right, so we're gonna have a hole here, and a hole here, a hole here and a hole right there. All right. Obviously your hole size is gonna be dependent upon what size anchors you're using, but for a half inch plate, half inch anchor should be fine. So we're gonna use our torch. We're gonna to, uh, puncture with the torch, go ahead and cut our circles out, get all that cut, and then we're gonna part it off and we'll have a base plate ready to rock and keep this job going, all right? Torch is still set up, but you know what? Let's walk through it one more time because you can't hear this enough. Right, close our bottles down. We're gonna shut it down. We're gonna start from scratch. Walk you guys through it one more time. A little review. Make sure you guys are getting everything you can out of this because safety is really the biggest thing with this. Shut everything down. Okay. So again, we're gonna ease open on our low pressure gas cylinder. Ease that guy open half to three quarters of a turn. Oxygen cylinder, ease it open, crank it all the way open so it seats on the top, no leaks. <clears throat> Crack the acetylene knob. I'm gonna back out our valve first, regulator. Crack that knob open about a quarter of a turn. 
tighten your regulator in so you get about five pounds. Close your valve. Oxygen, same thing. Open your oxygen valve. You're going to turn that in so you get about 20 to 25, 30 at the most for this tip size. Go ahead and close that as well. All right. We're ready to go ahead and light this fire. Let me grab my gear, safety glasses. It's much easier to fab this plate on a large piece of steel. So that's why you don't want to part it off and then cut your holes. It's easier to do everything you have to do to the plate first. And then the last thing you want to do is part it off, okay? So go ahead and light it, grab my striker. Crack open our acetylene, about a quarter of a turn, get it lit. Ease out on a little bit. Add our oxygen until we get that neutral flame, okay? See those cones get nice and sharp. If you go too far, see how they thin out, gets loud. You hear that hiss? That's an oxidizing flame, okay? If you have a long neutral flame, that's your carburizing flame, okay? It's too more fuel gas than oxygen. So you want to be right in the middle, nice sharp cones, nice neutral flame. Again, always check your oxygen valve to make sure your flame stays uniform. In this case, we're ready. It looks good. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to cut these holes and then we're going to part it off, all right? Come down right in the center of your hole, okay? I'm going to be right in the middle. We're going to sit there till it gets red. Don't try to prematurely puncture it. And then you're asking to get a face full of metal. So, and sit there, let it get hot. You can pop your oxygen valve real quick to give it a little test to see if it starts to cut or not. See how it starts to spit out. So that means we're pretty much ready to go. So. Go ahead and hold your about eighth inch uh, distance of your fl your flame cones off the material. We're gonna go ahead and puncture. Okay, and then from the center we can come out. And these holes were just eyeballed. I didn't measure anything on those because. Not really sure of the size of our anchor, and this is for demonstration purposes. So go ahead and use your torch, get that nugget out of there. There's our first hole. Do the same thing over here. Go pulse it, see if we're gonna start cutting. There we go. Go ahead and let it rip. Come on out from center. You always want to try to be as smooth as you can with this. Again, it's just an anchor hole, so nothing critical here. We're just trying to get the job done. All right, go ahead and turn off your acetylene valve first, and then your oxygen valve. Go ahead and get our, our uh, straight edge clamped up here. Again, we use the, the tip to actually set our distance. So we want to be just on the other outside of your line. Let's do a quick dry run, make sure it's nice and straight. Go ahead and clamp that down. Settling on. Okay. Again, be mindful of where your hoses are. This plate is gonna fall. Watch your hose, your hoses, and your toes. Okay. It's already pretty hot from cutting our holes, so we shouldn't need a preheat. Again, nice and smooth. Smooth as fast.
tuning in today, guys. A little gas axe action for you. So hopefully you learned something. I push this on my students because safety is number one. It's all about the only thing in the lab they can really hurt yourself with. So as basic as it may seem, it's information everybody needs to know. Uh, make sure you check out weldlife.com. Use discount code Warrior Welding TX. And again, the St. Jude campaign. Get on board with us. Raise some money for these families that really need our help. And get yourself some merch like this. <laughs> Weldlife.com, guys. We'll see you next time.